lost sheep drops to the ground and refuses to move. The shepherd who finds it must pick the beast up. There is no other way to get it back to the flock. It must be carried. Sheep are too big to carry under one's arm, so a fireman's carry across the shoulders is the only way to do it. Since in Jesus' world, a lost sheep was probably in a rocky desert, a shepherd staggering along with one on his shoulders would have risked sprained ankles or worse. If I were a shepherd and one of my sheep wandered off, I would say, tough luck, and leave it at that. Of course, the sheep would have some right to complain. You say I don't understand when I'm being helped, but you're no better. God does all sorts of things in your life, sends you all sorts of people, teachings, and opportunities, and you complain or ignore them. You would rather sit down in your stupidity, your sin, and your laziness than get up and follow the Lord, even though he's leading you to safety. Let's leave the sheep. They're getting embarrassing. And turn to money. That's something we all appreciate. The lost coin to which Jesus refers is not merely loose chains dropped by the woman while she was unpacking the groceries. A woman wore her wealth as a headdress, the coin strung around her brow. The woman in the story has only 10 coins, each worth about one day's wage. With only that much of an emergency fund, she's poor. To lose even a single coin is a disaster. So she gets to work. In a house without windows, she has to rely on the light that comes through the door and a small flickering oil lamp. Her broom would be her major help. By sweeping the whole place, she might hear a welcome clink as the broom hit the coin and knocked it against something. In both stories, of course, the searcher is God. God is the shepherd who will not leave the sheep to die in its stupidity. He searches us out and then does the real work of saving us from ourselves, saving us for our real home with the flock of God. God is the woman who looks for the lost coin. Jesus had no trouble speaking of God as a woman, and the early church had no trouble passing on the tradition that he did so, something that might shock many today. God will do all in her power to bring us back to her. We can lose ourselves in all the dark places of the world and of our hearts, but she will be persistent. And finally, God is the, lo the loving Father who embraces his wayward son and welcomes him home to a feast. Why? Why should God take such trouble with me? I'm not worth the effort. I'm stupid wandering away from the way I know leads to full life. I'm lost more often than not, or rather, I lose myself. Yet, God keeps coming after me, offering forgiveness and wisdom. The reason could not be in myself. Someone so perverse as I cannot deserve God's searching love, but I receive it all the same. It can only be because God loves me, regardless of how I act. I tend to view the Christian life as a project, something to be achieved. We draw up lists of things to do, work for justice, say our prayers, share the Eucharist, contribute to charity and the collection basket. All of that is nonsense compared to what Christianity is really all about. God, the shepherd who will never abandon me when I stray. God, the housewife who will search me out wherever I may get lost. God, the father who will always forgive and welcome me. I am the lost sheep, but God will lift me up on his shoulders and bring me home. I am the lost coin, but God will hunt me down till she holds me once again. I am the wandering son, but God welcomes me home. This is the gospel. One scholar describes today's passage as the distilled essence of the good news, the gospel within the gospel. God is merciful 
not to humankind, but to lost, bewildered, stupid, unlovable me.